Hey, how's it going? Hope you're doing well. I wanted to quickly talk about this tool that I've been checking out, Erasure.io. It's a diagramming tool. I actually used it in a previous video and a couple of people were asking me about it. For the most part, it's a very simple tool, but you can see that it's extremely geared towards engineers. There's some really well thought out uh, features in here. But the specific one I wanted to talk about today is their new ability to create diagrams using AI. I personally have never seen something like this. So it's kind of fun and fascinating at the same time. I want to show you how this works. So the nice thing about this tool is, as you can see, you know, it's just like any other diagram tool. You can pick a tool, start drawing. But what makes it kind of advanced is it has this ability to, you can create diagrams using code. But even beyond that, you can create diagrams using AI. And again, this is the really fascinating part that I want to show off today. You can see on the right side here, uh, there, you, there's a place for you to put in a prompt, right? So think like you're doing chat GPT type stuff, but you're doing that for diagrams. Let's say that, uh, let's just make a really basic flow chart. When person is hungry, walk to the fridge. If not, go back to sleep. Check if there is food in the fridge. If so, eat it, then go back to sleep. Otherwise, just go back to sleep. All right, so it, we, we, you can probably visualize this in your head, but we can generate it and see what comes out. There you go, and that's what it created for us, decision-making when hungry. Another thing you can do is actually edit your diagram again with a follow-up prompt, so you can see that there's a prompt history here. So it kind of keeps track of what you've asked it to do before. Uh, let's try update the diagram to if there is no food then run to the grocery store then go to sleep see if this can handle what i'm trying to do so we're trying to add something in this path right so uh, but there we go you can see that it did actually pull off uh, editing this diagram so pretty cool right now uh, this is just a basic flow chart let's try to come up with something uh, a little bit more fancy so another thing i've been trying for this tool is you know perhaps creating uh, data models for an application that maybe I'm creating from scratch. Let's say, for example, that we were creating something sort of like a, a Reddit clone, right? So let's say data model for, for a Reddit application where users can create posts. Posts belong to a group. Posts can be upvoted or downvoted by users. Users can also add comments a comment can also have underlying comments give this a shot generate now it does say try writing 80 plus words i don't know if i imagine it will become significantly more accurate but as you can see here even with just you know a, sh a short paragraph it does generate something fairly reasonable so Let's take a look. We've got users and it's pointing to users owning comments and posts. A comment belongs to a post. You can see there's a post ID there. A post also belongs to a group or we were saying like a subreddit. And you can also see there's a line here going from users to votes uh, that it belongs to a user and a post. So you can vote on a post and they have vote type here for determining whether that's an upvote or not. So yeah, this is a perfectly viable data schema for something like a Reddit clone. You can see here that I, I was trying to describe something like a, a Facebook. Click uh, generate here. There you go. So yeah, you can make really awesome initial diagrams with this. And you can see earlier that you can also edit, right? So you can use it as a base and you can add prompts to keep editing. So that's pretty cool, right? I do want to show you these other diagram types that it can generate. But before we get there real quick, uh, something really fascinating that I also want to share is that you can actually also add in code. You can see here, it doesn't necessarily need to be an, an English prompt, right? So it can also understand code. So for example, if I paste a, a couple of SQL statements here, so I have a create table books, a couple of properties in there, and then uh, create table reviews. You can see that the book has one too many reviews and let's try to generate that. And there you go, you right? And this is a really simple example with just two tables. Another thing I noticed that it can even do, so here's a, an example, Prisma schema, right? So not completely SQL, but it's still something that describes schema of certs with some relationships. Uh, let me just copy this, see it over here, generate. You know, sometimes it runs into an error. Um, 
maybe it doesn't understand this part let me try that model user so it just has the models generate there you go is this similar so if we compare this to what prisma was expecting the data model to look like you can see here that what they're actually expecting is you know a user with in a with a profile can create posts and a post belongs to a category uh, the one thing that's missing from my diagram is this category to post uh, relationship so as you can see here it just has this direct line from uh, post to categories um, which is fine I think because it probably couldn't really understand that from from just the code itself right it was probably expecting to see a model to represent this so so it doesn't understand that this is probably a another table right so one small detail there but again but the great thing is you can use this as a base and then you can edit this right as you saw you can keep adding prompts or you can manually edit it as you need to uh, so again that's that's the really cool thing about it I want to also quickly try drizzle or let's see if I can generate tables from that um, so here we have a I'm going to copy this looks like they have a country's table and it has some kind of relationship to cities or a city belongs to a country let's just copy this and see is it smart enough to do drizzle error I'm guessing that, like things like imports and stuff like that doesn't help generate okay there you go it also worked so very very cool even a, a drizzle schema worked so something about some statements like imports that it probably wasn't trained on seems to not be able to handle but as you can see if you delete it, it seems to work so that's awesome what else can i show you guys here so let's think of another scenario let's imagine that we're trying to create an authentication diagram so here's a really simple one that uh, i've worked with in the past actually when i was learning uh, how to do oidc and you can see that they're, they're pretty basic flow you've got a client and some kind of uh, authorization server client sends a request they authenticate and then that comes back with some kind of authorization code and then you actually have to do this flow where you you then make another token request to the server using that code which then gets you an id token and an access token right and if, if you're familiar you eventually would use the ID token to get more details about the user. You would use the ask the token sort of like, you know, your typical JWT to keep requ to requests for API. I want to try to see if I can replicate this. So I'm going to fast forward a little bit here and I type this out. You can see I said authentication flow between a client and an authorized server. And then to the best of my ability, I tried to describe the different steps and it's a generate. And there you go. You can see, uh, so not 100% what I was expecting, but it's pretty close, right? Like this validate credentials should have been an arrow back to the server, but that could have just been uh, the way I described it here in the prompt. Probably wasn't good enough to understand that this is a step pointing to back to itself. Let's see if we can edit that. Have step two be an arrow from authorization server and back to itself there you go right so that's a little bit better that's closer to what i was expecting with the same arrow here so pretty cool again with with a little bit of uh follow-up it does get pretty close to what i wanted one more thing i showed you some examples of entity relationships some sequencing and a flow chart earlier uh, real quick let's do some some basic cloud architecture right so again think about this from a system design perspective we were just able to uh, design a data model and then imagine that on top of that data model we're now trying to create an actual cloud architecture so again i typed up to save some time so i said aws cloud architecture diagram for uploading and processing files uh, from a browser user uploads a file which is sent to an api gateway who then invokes a lambda Lambda processes the file, saves metadata into a DynamoDB, then saves a copy of the file to S3. Let's generate. And there you go. I was expecting this to be not necessarily a sequence. I was trying to get you guys an example of like a, a cloud architecture. But before we do that, let's see if we can change from AWS services to Google Cloud. I'm not as familiar with Google Cloud, but let's take a look if 
it's smart enough to update those. I think this looks right. Again, I'm not as familiar, but the cloud functions versus lambdas, I think that's correct. Some kind of cloud storage, probably the S3 alternative. Um, so pretty cool. Again, uh, yeah, it's even smart enough to compare different, you know, what services map to other services. I wanted to do specifically more of this cloud architecture, not a sequence. Uh, so let's actually explicitly click that, see if we can get a better result. And let's maybe do a uh, location based service. Let's think like something like Yelp. User can search for businesses, uh, requests go through an API gateway. And there are two microservices. One service is for searching, let's say within a given location. The second service is for getting details about the given. Both services connect a relational database, which has a primary write DB, right? So imagine that you know, a user can also be someone who owns a business they can add, but also, uh, you know, we probably want to scale our database. So let's say that uh, both services connect to relational database, which has a primary DB, which has a several replicated read databases. Start with that. There you go. So this is what I was kind of expecting closer to, you know, if you were diagramming a a system diagram. Um, so yeah, API gateway pointing to two lambdas talking to some databases and it was able to you know create me a couple replicas there. And again, uh, we should be able to edit this, for example, add a service for creating businesses. And let's see if we can maybe have uh, one of the service talking to a different database. So uh, update search service to to a different locations database there you go so very useful right you can see that again you can start from a basic base like however well you can describe it and then from the result you can add follow-ups to improve it yeah that's what i wanted to show you guys today i didn't want to spend too much more time but you can see you can you can do a lot with this. It's very fascinating. I'm not gonna talk too much about it, but they do also have this AI feature for the document side of things. So Eraser IO also has uh, you know both a diagramming but also a a place where you can create uh, documentation. So you can see uh, they have a generate outline here. I haven't tested this much, um, but I imagine it's very much like. Uh, similar to chat GPT, but with a couple extra things that you can enhance it with right so there you have it hopefully you enjoyed the video it is I, in my opinion is a very useful tool now full disclosure eraser.io did reach out to me to do a review of this new feature uh, but all opinions are my own you can see i even showed you some of the errors i ran into so for the most part in my opinion uh, this is an extremely useful feature for my day-to-day -day workflow as someone who is, you know, both a full-time software engineer, I have to create uh, diagrams like this. And also for someone who creates content, right, I often have to create diagrams for just explaining how things work. So a tool like this is something that I'm, I'm very happy to review and also share with you guys. So uh, hopefully you guys like this. Uh, let me know if there's any other tools like this that you want me to check out and kind of review for you. Uh, I'd love to do that. Uh, but anyways, thanks for stopping by to watch and I'll see you in the next one.